it's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today, I believe we've got a really, really special beer to, to show you. Probably one of the most special beers, important beers of 2020, maybe even since 2015, the last five years. Uh, we're talking about Abbey de Saint Remy, or better known as the Rochefort Brewery, and it's their Trappist Rochefort Triple Extra coming in at 8.1% ABV. 330ml bottle. Now some of you might be asking, why is this beer so special? Well you see here, 1920-2020. So they first produced this beer in 1920. It was produced as a, a blonde Trappist for only three years and they stopped production. But they decided in 2020, the time was right to resurrect this beer and add a little bit of a modern twist to it. So, this triple extra, here's the bottle cap. Without further ado, let's get it out into a glass, see what we get. A Belgian Abbey beer. Look at the smoke. Look at that controlled smoke on the bottle opening. I'm really excited to try this for a number of reasons. Number one, I've not had a Belgian beer in such a long time. Number two, I've not had a beer from Rochefort for such a long time. You do the eight, you do the 10, you do the 12, you do the blonde. Is it them to do a blonde or is that Westmile blonde or? West Fletcher and Blonde. I think I've done West Fletcher and Blonde. But I'm sure Rochefort do a blonde. But look at the sediment. Look at that. Can you see the... Look at the sediment there rolling down. Into the bottom of the glass there. Look at that. Beautiful kind of... It's dancing. The carbonation is dancing and throwing the sediment round the glass it's a amber orangey amber coloured beer good levels of carbonation four finger white head I'm not too bothered about the head at this time when you talk about a Belgian beer they generally a lot of them have got great big heads on them. The, the carbonation on the Belgian beers because they're yeast forward beers are very very important and what I will say at this stage as well I'm just waiting for the head to dissipate a little bit because although it's quite a there's a, quite a lot of sediment in this beer I want to I want to get all of the beer in the glass it's very important it's not about the look of a beer with a Belgian beer. It's about aroma, flavour, taste. You're meant to put the yeast in or the sediment in to a Belgian beer. That's what I'm trying to say here. So, hazy looking. Let's get the aroma. Dead excited for this. And when they say a modern twist, I'm going to say a hoppy modern twist. Marmalade, lots of spice, an estuary yeast forward beer. Marmalade and Belgian candied sugar. A dryness, definitely a certain dryness to the beer. Lots of spices coming through, it smells fantastic. Should we dive in? Cheers. Oh, exemplary. 
I can't even say that word. Exemplary. <laughs> I'll type it in the comments box. I can't pronounce it. I can't get it out. Exemp exemplary. Oh, I can't get what well, I've ruined the moment. The first taste, I've ruined the moment. Fantastic, perfect, brilliant. Um lots of carbonation on the first taste. Um we always like to have a bit of fun with our beer reviews. Serious but fun at the same time. I'm still trying to pronounce that word in my head. Exemplary. Exemplary. Yeah, that'll do. Um, lots of carbonation pushes the beer on the inside of the mouth. Release, it releases lots of marmalade flavours. Um, it's, it's spicy and peppery. It's very dry. It's a very dry beer, but Belgian beers generally are quite dry beers. Uh, what I was meant to say earlier, earlier on as well, um, this is the first beer from Rochefort for the last 65 years. So it was a 100 year old recipe that they re resurrected from 1920. They produced the beer for three years, but the last time they brewed a beer at the brewery was 1955. So that was 65 years. 65 years. That's my maths anyway. That's a long time. That's a long time for a brewery not to produce a new beer. And it goes to show, really, it goes to show that you, you don't have to produce lots of different beers every single month. That seems to be, well, that's, that's been the trend for the last three or four years. Um, a certain Manchester brewery um, with, the, with, with, with clouds in their name um, started off this, this almost fashion of producing beers every single month and not having a core range. Whereas, whereas Trappist Rochefort, they've relied on their six, their eight, their 10 and their 12 for their kind of their beer sales. And they've sold beer all around the world for a long, long time. Um, and they've not needed to bring out a new beer in 60, 65 years. And I like that. I like that. That's a great kind of reputation to uphold. But at the same time, I like the fact that breweries do bring out new beers every single month. But I'm a very, very big advocate in having a cool range. It's very important to have a cool range. Look at the lacing of the glass. Look as I rock the beer back and forth. You can see that carbonation chasing the, the head of the glass. This is such an important moment for Rochefort. This is such an important moment for Belgium beer brewing in general. To have such a fantastic brand, a historical brand, produce a new beer after all of these years is something to behold. Look at the yeast there. Look at that yeast. It's very mellow. It's very drinkable. It's very refreshing. Just kind of stirring some of this carbonation out of this beer. The first taste was very, very rigorous and carbonated and in your face, but Swirling this round a bit, releasing some of the carbonation from the beer, it really smooths the beer out. And you would never believe it was 8.1% ABV. It's a fantastically drinkable beer. Lots of Belgian candied sugar in here. Marmalade, touch of lemon, touch of lime. Lots of like light wafer like biscuit malt flavors coming through. I've gone too long. I've gone too long from drinking Belgian beer for whatever reason. For I think it's been down to this whole kind of this situation we like to call it. Oh, I like to call it in 2020. Um, 
I used to review a lot of Belgian beer on the channel. I used to review a lot of German beer on the channel. And this has really been a, a pause, if you like, in me reviewing Belgian beer. And when you go so long without drinking a Belgian beer and you get a really, really good one like this, it, it makes you realize, without even knowing it, how much you've missed Belgian beer and Belgian brewing. One of the top three countries in the world, I would say, in, in quality beer production. Wonderful, wonderful. I've been to Belgium, drank some incredible beer, some really, really incredible beer. And I, I have a, another bottle of this, I bought a second bottle. I think Craft Beer Lady's going to review it. If she decides she doesn't, and she just holds on to the bottle, I'll let her forget about it, and I'll put her bottle in a cupboard somewhere, in the dark, in, the, in a cool cupboard. I live in a damp house, so it's, it's not hard to find a cool, dark place in this, <laughs> in this house. And I'll just, I'll just leave it there. I'll just leave it there for years and years. Batch one of this beer. Um, tremendous stuff, really is. If you're a, a lover of Belgian beer, or if you're new to beer, and you've not tried a Belgian beer, I urge you, I urge you to go and I picked this up myself from Beer Merchants. Um, I think I ordered it. I did order it fried on the on the Stone Crow Virtual Pub. Live on the live feed, we ordered this beer. Mel ordered it on her mobile phone as we were doing the live stream on Friday night. And um, what a what a fantastic choice this was. It was only two or three pounds to buy. Um, there was quite a big delivery charge. We didn't want to buy too much beer. Um, I got so much in the house, <laughs> so much in the house. But what a beer, yeah. I'm glad, I'm really pleased that I ordered this beer. Is there anything on the back? Um, brewed with water, malted barley, malted wheat, sugar, yeast, hops, orange peels and spices. You can definitely get the orange peel. Definitely get the orange peel coming through. Um, and the spices, yeah, you definitely get the spices as well. What a terrific, terrific beer this is. Absolutely incredible. Um, that would have been the ideal glass to put it in. The Belgian, lovely, beautiful, big stem glass. But yeah, that's not a bad glass. It's not a bad glass to use. Um, I could talk forever. I could stand here and talk forever. But what I'm going to do because we got some newbies watching um, I've had some comments on some beers where there's been lots of sediment in the glass and I've had, from, from from new people who were getting into beer and they've been like oh my goodness me what's what's going on and um, most notably the um, guava beer from Northern Monk that's in Morrison's at the moment um, it was a few people saying this beer needs to be recalled. Um, I totally disagree. I totally di disagree. Absolutely disagree. Um, that beer was meant to be heavily kind of heavily said lots of sediment. Sediment heavy. That's the one. Uh, and likewise with a beer like this. There's nothing wrong with this beer. The beer is meant to have a certain amount of yeast in the bottom of the bottle. I'm going to prove that by drinking it. Here we go. absolutely chock full of vitamin B chock full of vitamin B and there's a little bit look look at that there's a little bit still there that there you go lovely I didn't mean to swear at you then hmm huh. Beautiful, beautiful beer at 8.1% ABV. I'm going to rate it. I'm going to give it an absolutely fantastic smashing 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom. Cheers.